guys, so today I want to talk to you about brush hygiene and this is something I'm really quite passionate about because a lot of the time when I see my clients coming through the door and they're telling me they've got acne, they've got sensitivity and things like that and they bought this, that and products all over the place, one of the questions I have to ask is how frequently do you wash your brushes? Because the amount of bacteria that builds up on your brushes would shock you. I read an article this week about bacteria on brushes titled harmful superbug e coli strepocartus and fungi have been found lurking in women's handbags no makeup bags so yeah, yeah nine in ten makeup products including mascara lip glosses and beauty blenders so the sponges that be, people use to apply uh, were found to be affected uh, discovered for, by scientists from Aston University School of Life and Health and Science, Scientists. Sciences? Hard word to say. Um, so yeah, this has been, you know, scientifically proven that there are so many harmful bacteria um, on our brushes and we're just putting it on our face. I mean, ugh, who wants to do that? So I always recommend cleaning the brushes. Now, my current favourite uh, product to clean my brushes with is uh, the Me uh, Cleanse and Condition make uh, Brush Balm. And basically, it, I love it. I mean, it's got a little bit of coconut oil in there, so it really gets like the oiliness out of the brushes, so that the brushes become really clean. It basically means the difference between this brush and this brush. And, you know, obviously they're the same brush, one's dirty, one's clean. And I've, I've used a lot of cleansers and some of them you wash them and they still look like that, which makes you think, well, how clean up the actual brush. So it's really important. And it does make a better application for your makeup. You do get a much smoother, much more uh, polished effect with your makeup when you are using clean brushes. So it really does have an importance. Anybody who's come to any of my makeup lessons will know I hate the sponges, these beauty blenders. I mean, they are the worst. I mean, have you ever seen one that's been cut in half after use? The amount of ugh, inside them is disgusting. And even when you wash them, you cannot fully clean them. Even with antibacterial, you still got that risk of having, uh, you know, that strepocartus, that E. coli, that fungus in there. And what these do, uh, these uh, these things, is they can cause all sorts of illnesses. Now, let me have a look at this. Um, so yeah, going back to my point about beauty blenders. Beauty blenders had the highest level of potential harmful bacteria overall of 90%, 93% of users had never cleaned them and more than half of the respondents, 64%, had admitted to dropping them on the floor at some point too. So again, as soon as you drop it on the floor, you get floor bacteria. And, you know, who knows what you've been stepping in on the way. Um, so, you know, these beauty blends, just don't bother. Throw them out. You know, if you're going to use them, buy a cheap packet from Poundland. Use it once, throw it away. Not great for the environment, but better for your skin. If you should feel like you cannot live without your beauty blenders. Um, so, yeah, I will read you, continue to read you the rest of this because it's super interesting. I mean, I'm a bit of a makeup girl nerd, so it's interesting for me. So, more than half of lipsticks, 56%, and lip glosses, 55%, were found to be carrying Streptococcus bacteria, and I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, which can cause infections on the skin. So, um, if you do your research into it, I mean, as far as I'm aware, I think it's one of those flesh-eating ones, it's very, very, ugh, don't want it. Um, along with 69% of mascaras and 72% uh, of beauty blenders and 70% of eyeliners having these um, the strepocartus on it. Ew. Likewise, on the E. coli, one in 10 lipsticks and lip gloss were harboring E. coli. Now, E. coli comes basically from your fecal matter. You know, when you flush the toilet, that goes up in the air and spreads everywhere. Yeah, that's why we like to keep our bathrooms nice and clean. Um, so yeah, um, 
so one in ten lipstick and lip glosses were harboring E. coli, which can cause gastrointestinal uh, infections. Um, so if you, you've got things like IBS and everything like that, which a lot of women have, no shame, no shame. We really don't want to be having that. You know, we really don't want to be consuming something that's going to make us sick. You know, you think, oh, that horrible meal I had, that gorgeous meal I had, it's given me food poison. No, it was your lipstick. Um, uh, other related, um, and there was other related germs. Well, beauty blenders, 70, no, 57%, uh, lipsticks at 37, and eyeliners at 82 were discovered to be carrying fungi. Ugh. Um, so like I say, you know, it's, it's disgusting. Um, the scientist who did it tested 467 lipsticks, lip glosses, eyeliners, mascaras, beauty blenders in a makeup bag. Um, and, you know, they were saying that many were contaminated because of not being cleaned regularly or being used for longer than their expiry date. So it is very important that, you know, we, we keep our makeup fresh and up to date because, you know, that lipstick you've had in the bottom of your handbag for the last year, bin it. Don't, don't put it anywhere near you, bin it. Um, and other reasons were like um, things like people failing to wash their hands after using the toilet and then applying makeup or dropping their makeup sponges on the floor, um, you know, were also uh, come forward as a possible thing of why these makeup brushes are, you know, being covered in bacteria. And plus, whatever bacteria you've already got in your face immediately goes onto your brush and then sits there. So the next time you use that brush and breathes. So if it's already on your skin, then you add apply it to your brush and then you add it there. Um, so what are the risks of these bacteria that we have in our brushes? So the different bacteria can cause illnesses ranging from skin infection to blood poisoning, uh, if near the eyes, mouth, or on cuts and grazes. Well, you know, how many times do you accidentally poke yourself in the eye? And, you know, if you put it on your lips, you're going to consume it. Simple as. And we all have spots. Ain't no shame. We all have spots. You pick them. Obviously, I, I advocate that you don't pick them, but I, I am myself and admitted I like to pop. I don't, but I like to pop. So that's, that's an open wound straight in for that bacteria that already has bacteria in it, and boom, you've got, you know, into your blood system. Ugh. Um, researchers said uh, all of this in a study. Um, the risk is amplified with people with a weak immune system. So if you are somebody who has um, an autoimmune disease, if you suffer from depression, because that lowers your um, immune system, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to affect you deeply. So it is incredibly important to look after yourself and your brushes. Um, da, 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 da. So yeah, basically, I mean, <sighs> clean your brushes. It's incredibly important, you know, it's today to make, uh, do my look, I have used all these brushes, I am immediately going to go and wash these now, so that the next person I use these on will not get any of the bacteria that I have had on my face, or the E. coli or Streptococcus or anything like that, they're going to be nice and clean. Hey guys, obviously, uh, about halfway through this, you have immediately stopped watching this video and gone to wash your brushes, and if you have lasted this long, please go wash your brushes. So... I will see you guys soon and happy brush washing. Woo!